Happy New Year, everyone. Welcome to 2021. It's going to be a great year because we're going to make it a great year. Starting off, we're going to dive into the new Rush FPV Blade Stack Series, which I'm really happy because they've implemented a pretty new feature that a lot of companies aren't doing, and I don't know why, which begs the question, do we really need to solder every single component on our drones? Now, let's build it up and check it out. The Rush Flight Controller is their F722, and there are two versions of it, analog and digital. The digital version has a barometer built in, while the analog just has its standard OSD. On the back side of the flight controller, you'll need to bridge a couple connections to supply power to your camera, VTX, and receiver. Camera and VTX can take 5 volts or battery voltage, and the receiver can take 5 volts or 3 voltage. Same with the digital, there's a pad back there that you need to bridge for the receiver. The analog version weighs 8.6 and the digital version weighs a little bit more at 9.2. Now it came with a bunch of grommets and cable connections and a couple of extras which are really nice because this is the only thing with those kind of plugs and you may not have that in your slew of bins for miscellaneous parts. And having a couple extras will be nice if you do crash and break something. I also like how the 30 by 30 holes are cut out on the side makes adding a grommet Really easy if you've ever fought with trying to shove a grommet through the little tiny holes. You know that it can be difficult sometimes, and sometimes you rip and tear those trying to remove them or put them back and forth. Now the ESC comes in two versions, a 50 amp and a 60 amp. It can handle BL Heli 32. And also comes with that really cool power filter board on the back that really helps clean up some of the noise uh, coming through with your signal. I have a lot more details on that, and you can check out my review of the Blade ESC on my channel. I personally have been building drones for about six years and soldering is just something you have to do. Even though I've been doing it for so long, I still don't always enjoy the process. I'd much rather just plug and play and make it simple, but building your own drone does keep costs down and make it simple. The new flight controller from Rush has a lot of extra plugs on the flight controller so you can simply plug in your camera plug it into the flight controller. Same with the VTX and the receiver. If you run it with their blade stack, you'll just plug in the ESC underneath that also. There is the option for direct soldering on the bottom side of the board. And I think that's very smart and well thought out because you may break one of these plugs during a crash and you'll still want to be able to use the flight controller just because you broke the plug doesn't mean you want to crap out the whole drone or get a new electronic for it. I think there is a really good market for the plug and play cameras VTX. Personally, I'm not going out bashing freestyling all the time and destroying my drone. When I crash, I break a lot of arms and cameras. I honestly don't bash up the inside of the flight controller unless I happen to get a bad stick or something odd poking through the inside of the frame. Which begs the question for me personally, do we need to solder everything on these drones? When it comes to the ESC, yes, we still need to solder the motors on there. Nobody's making a real small, simple plug to, to make that process a little more streamlined as of yet. Now, I know with some flight controllers, you have the through-hole soldering, and you can put pins on there. But I've never really trusted that because it's just a simple pull, and it can come off. The Blade flight controller does have a little snap pin to lock it in. It won't just wiggle out due to vibration or a bump or a crash. If you're trying to replace that in the drone, it's really hard to actually grab that clip to release it and pull it out. So you may still need to dive into the drone, take off the canopy and the standoffs to get in there to release the plug. Once I was all done, plugging in the camera VTX and all the easy stuff, setting up in beta flight was also pretty simple because the flight controller already knew where my VTX was going. It already knew where my receiver was going. All I had to do in beta flight is set up whether I was using Crossfire or not. The configuration already had all of my UART ports set up and ready to go for me. I just went in and kind of double checked to make sure they were there. Again, if you're new to building drones, it's one less thing you have to do. As we go into the ports tab, you can see that our UART 2 under the serial RX is active, and that's going to be for our receiver. And then the UART 4 
with the VTX Smart Audio is also already active. Configuration I'm setting up, I went to DSHOT 600, I have my props out, I switched my uh, frequency to 8 and 4, I just always have had better results with that. We need to set up our serial based receiver, which is what it's already set up on, and I am running Crossfire. This is my Rush Ruxus frame. And then uh, all I had to do was set up my arm switch for my drone. That's all I ever really set up. I checked my motor direction already. I've set up my OSD and you do still need to set up your VTX table. I have a Rush Tank VTX and I was able to download that file from their Facebook, I believe. That actually brings up a really good point. It's difficult to find all the information you need for the products. I really wish Rush would put together a website and put all their manuals on it and their information and their VTX tables and what the little LED lights do on their VTX. Uh, because whenever I need that information, I have to go to a distributor's page and hope they have the manual that I'm looking for. Or I have to filter through your Facebook page. You've had a website URL address, RushFPV.com, for quite a while, and it says coming soon. I hope it really is coming soon in 2021. I built a 7-inch drone around this Rush FPV blade stack because I'm doing cinematic and I need something very reliable. I believe I get that from Rush. I've been flying their 2020 stack for over a year and it just keeps on kicking. We're going to fly up into the snow in the mountains, get some cinematic footage. Sorry if it's a little shaky, I was still trying to tune while I got footage because I'm getting a lot of snowstorms coming up and I may not be able to fly. So let's check out the footage and you can think about that question I asked if we really need to solder everything. We'll come back and we'll get your answer. I got a break in the storm, so let's speed things up a little bit.
I got some footage just in time before the next set of storms rolls in. I'm really happy with the plugs and I'd really like to see this on more flight controllers in the future. A lot of companies are catering to the beginner drone pilots with bite and fly drones and PNP drones. What better way to simplify the hobby for those end users than to put a couple plugs on it and make it easy for them to swap out their cameras in VTX if they break them. I think there's a good market for this and I hope, in fact I'm sure, we will see more plug and play flight controllers, especially since you have the backup solder on the bottom in case you break it or you don't want to use those pads. My only complaint on the blade stack is the power filter board on the back of the ESC is big and I do need to warn you to make sure your frame has a large enough area behind the 3030 stack to fit the capacitors. I have had friends tell me that they bought the board and it doesn't fit inside their frame. Other than that, it's been flying great, and I'm going to have a lot more footage coming up from this uh, flight controller and frame all winter long from my area. That's going to do it. Thank you so much for watching. What do you think about the plug and play of the Rush Blade series? I personally like it and would like to see it on more drones, but what do you think? Could it withstand your type of flying, freestyle, or even racing? Do you think it'll last? What about ESCs? Do you think we'll ever be able to plug and play that? Or do you think the hobby will still separate a lot of people because of the added skill of soldering? Thank you again. If you have any questions about the Blade series, building drones, or anything in general, find me on Instagram or Facebook at NorCal Drones. Till next time, keep ripping packs.